Today on Alvarez TV, we are dissecting the acoustic guitar piece by piece from the headstock to the end block and everything in between. It's a deep dive, it's a bit of a long one. Enjoy. As Dee said, anatomy of an acoustic guitar. Absolutely. So I thought we'd just start off at the top, mm -hmm. the headstock, just work through, see where we get to. Okay. Is that right? There's a lot to get through, right? There's a fair amount, but like you could, you know, you could go into some deep dives, obviously things like bracing, etc. But we'll try and keep it general. Okay. And then certain things, or if people have questions, we'll we'll do a deeper dive in, whether it's bracing or thicknesses of woods and all that sort of stuff. Great stuff. So I'm going to start here because it's, mm. it seems like a decent place to start. That's a headstock, and a neck, and a heel, and made from beautiful mahogany. Three pieces of mahogany, right? It's, this is a three piece, mm -hmm. yeah. The, having a one piece neck is like a sign of a high end guitar and I get that. Uh, my thinking is how much benefit you get from a one piece neck because having a one piece neck creates a lot of waste in wood and we don't want to do that. Sure. So this is actually a three piece neck. We do two piece necks as well where the headstock and the neck are the same piece, but the heel for us anyway for Alvarez is all um, is always separate. So if you imagine, so that's a neck blank. You're cutting that piece of wood out of this. So, you know, it can only be so thick, right? Right, so you would get all of the pieces of wood out of the, oh, presumably not this, the heel. You wouldn't get the heel out of yeah. there. But if I can show, show you that. So, you know, you're gonna, get, you're gonna cut this out of here, then you get to there, mm -hmm. which is the headstock bit. Then you can use this bit for the headstock, but you have to flip it. And that's called a scarf joint, which is in here. But that means you can use lots of wood. And if you if you are using all you know one piece necks, and some people do with heels, there's really sort of skilled ways of cutting as many necks as possible mm -hmm. out of a single piece of wood. So they'll be like they'll be like this, you know, and yeah, you'll probably get five pieces out of a blank or whatever. And I presume the perceived wisdom is that it's about a transference of energy or something in it a more is. efficient way, but... It is, and somebody may completely disagree with me. I just think when you have a, a joint which is as clean and perfect as this scarf joint, which we do really well, how much are you losing that that's, that's a different piece of wood on the back than it is to here? Mm -hmm. I think some things, you know, we put a scarf joint in the headstock. Some people put a scarf joint in... Is it like that? a tapered kind of joint then? Correct. Right. So it's, some people, you know, they'll, they'll put the scarf down here mm -hmm. and then it comes around. I don't like doing that because to me, the pressure should always be above the nut or the yeah. joint should always be above the nut because obviously you've got all that tension going on. Of course. And I have seen things fail here. So for us, I don't know if you can see that, but you can see that there's a, a slight line there and there's a line on the back but it's beautifully done. That is strong as, mm. maybe even arguably stronger than a one piece. When it's such a lovely glue joint like that and perfectly cut, mm -hmm. how much energy, transfer of energy are you losing? Yeah. Um, uh, can you hear that? Uh, yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you might be able to. I don't think I can. No, I think it's, I think it's going to be infinitesimal Mega, isn't yeah, it really probably definitely. i'm sure somebody's measured it and has a, an opinion about that but yeah but anyway so that's what we do then the heel you'll see there's a a join there because that's cut out of another piece of wood if it was can you imagine you've got a, like a huge piece of mahogany if of that course, was a lot out. of waste a lot of waste well, so all that's mm -hmm. like you know you can use it for other stuff but generally there's still there's still a lot of fallout so it's mm -hmm. so we don't some of the master works we used to do we used to do one piece so we used to do two piece so the heel was different than a one piece neck and, and we may go back to that for some models. Mm -hmm. And I think that's nice because you don't get the line and it's a kind of a high end finish. But really, if you do that scarf joint, and to me, you do it above the nut, you don't do it below it. The, it as well as that, it's strong. It's never ever gonna fail. So anyway, that's the neck. Uh, these two marks are just position markers for, for CNC because we do CNC on our necks these days. This is the neck fascia. This is um, probably from an artist series, so the fascia, uh, the rosewood fascia is very slim. On Masterworks, we do like a two mil fascia, which is mainly, mainly just aesthetics, really. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we have a pearl or abalone inlay in there. And then dr drilled for the, for the tuners. Do we always use the same wood for necks? I would always use mahogany for necks because, to me, I think there is sound. Actually, I was telling Sam about this book I was reading 
that I got given by William like years ago. It's by, uh, I think he's a scientist or an acoustician called Tim White. He put all sensors on a guitar and microphones, like got really sort of academic about it. And he thinks sound comes from everything in the guitar. Mm -hmm. Comes from the neck, the headstock, energy, sound, all, all that sort of stuff. And I kind of tend to agree with that. I think mahogany sounds the best. It's light and it's strong. It dries well. And like, it's just really strong for its weight. You can use maple. You'll see maple on guitars, on electric guitars, guitars jumbo yeah. or something like yeah. maple. Maple and the, and the mahogany we use are about the same hardness. Maybe it's probably stiffer, but maple's heavier. And I think when you use a, a maple neck, for me, you can feel that. Yeah. And I don't think you're getting benefit from response because of it, in my opinion. But we would always use mahogany. Just to mention one more thing specific to Alvarez, we have something called a complex curve. So our um, shape of our neck. Mm -hmm. A complex curve is when you have a... A radius which ch changes. If you have a radius which is perfectly round, it's not complex. It's it's the same mm -hmm. radius all the way around. But you can have radiuses which start at one setting and changes, so it might become more like a like an egg, for example. Mm -hmm. So like sort of flatten out in the middle. Yeah. So it's it's not all the same yeah. degrees all the way around. So what we do is we have quite a shallow V at the at the. At, at, in this part, in the, in, in next to the nut, mm -hmm. and that transitions to more of a C shape the further up the neck you get. Mm -hmm. So, for us, the V feels nice when you're you know when you're in the you know the lower frets. But when you change here, often your hand changes when you play. Yeah. And it's like you've got your thumb here. Take away some of that V, so your thumb isn't as far away from from that pressure. Yeah. Feels a little bit more comfortable. We we think so. Ours transitions from a shallow V to a C, which we call a complex curve. So that's what that's what that's about. And you've got the heel. Obviously, you cut the dovetail in the heel, and then mm -hmm. the heel will fit into here. And that is the headstock and the neck. Fantastic. Cool. Wonderful. So moving on, going to the next bit, which I guess will go to the body, and then we can go into the top. You know, this joint here is is where it's all, it's what it's all about. Not sound wise, but construction wise. There's so much pressure. I mean, it's the other way around. But but sorry, this way. Obviously, when you get the strings on, there, there's so much pressure in in this sound box because the tension of the strings when they're at full tension, mm -hmm. like a dreadnought will have maybe you know sort of 60, 70 kilos worth of tension pressure which is what, 120 to 140 pounds, that sort of thing. So you've got a bridge glued on a, on a two mil or a two and a half or a three mil piece of spruce with constant mm. you know, 60 kilograms or 120 plus pounds of pressure on there. So actually glue is amazing. Wood glue is amazing. It's like, you know, you, you, you stick a bridge on a wall and you hang 60 kg mm. off it mm -hmm. and it stays there, right? Mm -hmm. Forever. I mean, obviously they, they can lift, but that's, that's why. So this, this joint here has to be really, really strong because, you know, all the guitar wants to do is fold in half, basically. Yeah. That's what happens, you know, and eventually, often all the guitars, they'll need a, a neck reset because of all the tension. So this thing here is a neck block, goes in there like this, and it's what you cut the dovetail in from that side, and also it, it, it supports this, so you've got all this tension, so you, you, get, you have two pieces. We use a three-piece neck block. So the dovetail is cut into this Correct. piece of wood here, so that sits directly in there. Correct. So that's, it comes like this, obviously we, we've got a bit here, and then you would route out the dovetail here. Yeah. That goes in there and it sits in here. So for us, we use a three-piece neck block, and there's lots of discussion, thoughts about which way you have the grain, and some people use laminated neck blocks, or some people may use a a, a solid piece of mahogany with a with a, a laminated um, vertical piece. Mm -hmm. We use three pieces of mahogany. Obviously, they're dried, just like anything else. They go through our, our seasoning process because it's important that this thing doesn't move and swell and take on moisture. Yeah. Even though it's a solid piece of wood, it can still do that. So we have a mix of vertical grain and horizontal grain that if it ever were to, to lose or take on moisture, it would do that very, very, in a tiny amount. So because basically you don't want this to change because it's sitting on the top. Yeah. People have different thoughts. We have a, a vertical grain on this piece. We have a horizontal um, grain on this piece and we have the grain running the same as the top. Ah. On there. So neck block, super important. That's where the dovetail goes in. 
And this whole area here is all about construction, all about strength, because yep. again, going back to that tension, so you've got massive braces, you've got this whole A-frame section here, braces around the sound hall, because you've got, you know, all that tension going in, the, in, the, in this part of the guitar here. Mm -hmm. So we'll just get into a little bit of bracing because we could spend two weeks talking about that. But obviously the number one brace is this big, thick, heavy, mm. heavy duty kind of girder. And because that's, you know, where, where all that tension is. Of course. And of course there's a hole cut in the top, mm. which weakens it. So you've got these rather heavy and strong sound hole braces on the side. Sure. So you create, create like this A-frame effect just that brings, I mean, the, if you feel the top of that, it just isn't going anywhere. No, it's completely solid, isn't it? Completely yeah. solid. But Which is feel, incredible for such a... you feel, you know, down the bottom here, there's a bit more flex in there. That's oh what, yeah, of that's course. what you want. Of course. So this is super tight. This is where we want, we want some flexibility. So, do you know your braces? I you think, you think you do. We'll have a go. Um, X brace. Yeah. Cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, tone balls. Yeah. Uh, bridge plates. Yeah. And finger Finger braces. braces. Yeah, that's yep. what we call them. People have different names. Some people call first, second, third tier braces, face braces, transverse, mm -hmm. other things. But uh, I always call it number one, X, fingers and, and tone bars. Mainly the X braces doing, well, after, after this section, you know, coming down here, the X brace is doing the heavy lifting. Yeah. So the X brace is tied into the sides, often, sometimes they're not tied into the sides, and this is structural. It can impact sound, and that's where scalloping comes from. So basically you've got, you know, these would be full pieces, and we, we do scallop and thin our X, so retaining structural integrity, mm -hmm. but reducing mass. Because we touched on this do. before in another episode, we talked about how bracing wouldn't have been scalloped and then over time it became the the story i heard was you know cf martin they would actually go in when the guitar was finished and they'd use like this you know sort of a wow i guess it's sort of a, must have been like a one kind of an old sort of spoke shave type of thing so you have different styles of scalloping you know these these is this is what you call tapered so basically it starts high and you take it down to virtually nothing and then you have scooped so this is like the scooping here right and also you have peaks. So you have, you know, where, where, where you have more mass. Obviously mm -hmm. it's just, there's more weight there. There's yeah. more, you know, you're tightening up part of the top. Right. And we can get into that, but we'll just, we'll try and stay on the anatomy sure. because we could, could, could lose it. It's probably another episode in itself, could be, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, could, could absolutely be. So we've yeah. got our X-brace. When you say like forward shifting or back shifting or whatever people call it, we use forward shifting a lot. When it says forward shifted, it means that axis there is close to the sound hole. Yes. What that does is affect what sort of angle the axes of the X, whether it's narrow or wide. Mm -hmm. and obviously, if it's wider, you've got a bigger sort of soundboard. If you've got a bigger soundboard, for example, if you hold that one. So if you look at the difference of the axes of these two Xs, the size of that bridge plate compared to this bridge plate. Sure. So this this X is re you know it's very forward. It's about twenty. 25 mil or something, I think this is 30 or 32, mm -hmm. away from, you know, back from, from the, uh, the sound hall, which allows you to position those expresses differently. So basically, if this is a narrower axis, then you've got a smaller bridge plate. Right. The bridge plate is very, very important in guitar building, material-wise, position, size, etc. Because if you open the X up this far, bang, you've created all of this space, mm. right? But you've got to find that balance. So the balance is, I think I've said this before, like the, the equation in guitar building is finding the perfect balance between strength and vibration. But what is perfect? However you position those, to one person might be perfect, to another person it might be too bassy or too loud sure. or too much going on because you haven't put enough back. So when you take stuff away from construction, finding that balance that you don't go too far because the thing's got to stay together for decades, mm -hmm. I always think, think you have to put something back. So we've opened this up, but we've added a nice wide, strong bridge plate, you know, which obviously supports the bridge and the pins, but also adds structural integrity. Sure. So this was MST1 for us. It was like, or, or what I call a middle position X, and we didn't tie the X into the sides. So you see this X comes all the way, it will go in the curve and it's tied in. This one isn't. It actually stopped because my thinking was, Let's not do that. And let's, uh, let's allow the top to vibrate on the edges because where the top meets the body is super strong. 
because you know it's a, it's a joint mm -hmm. like this. It, there's not much flex towards the end. So some people use relief cuts. They'll either thin the top or they can grade the top, different thicknesses and different positions, so you get more activity, and more vibration. What I try to do is to stop this short, make it tight. So we're still getting the, the, the structural integrity that we need, but we're trying to make this flex more from the outside in. It sounded good. It was a darker sound, and it just, when we came up with FS6, it just, FS6 just was just more responsive, louder, and just a, just a better experience. So, right. But with so, FS6, you can see that the, the X-Brace is tied into the kerfing, right? To the kerfing, listen to you. Check me out. So this is the kerfing, so we can put that down for a second. So this is the kerfing around here. Uh, we use different types, usually depending on um, di different, different models. You can use mahogany kerfing or spruce kerfing. So a kerf is... A cut. Correct. So a kerf is, is, is a cut that is made by a saw. So obviously this has lots of kerfs, so it's called kerfing. Right. And we do that. It's, some people call it lining, so we do that so it, it can be... So it can be shaped. Yeah, shaped yeah. and have lots of tight radiuses in mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. So, you know, this one is tied in where the MST-1 wasn't, so we were trying to, to allow that top mm -hmm. to flex from the outside. But, but we had to have the, the middle quite tight, otherwise it would have been too weak. Right. This, but it has no bearing upon the structural kind of integrity. It does it's, it's, yeah, it does, because it's all about, if you have the braces super wide, you've got this massive soundboard, and there's, you know, there's very little in there. See, that's a very lightly built top. You know, if you look at this, there's like, there's a lot of thinning, uh, uh, you know, a lot of mass taken out of the X. Mm -hmm. Then you've got this super wide, like, um, X brace, or the axis. So, you know, this, this area here, if you, if you hold it up to that one, you know, it's, it's hugely different. Yes. So, absolutely. But, but again, if I was to, to, to try this one and not tie it in, I don't know, it's a bit risky. Some people might, might disagree. And it's also different. Like if you have a, you know, a super qualified, experienced luthier who's making one piece and he can get that and dial that in just right. You know, but when you're making 150 or 200 pieces a day and they're traveling around the world, mm -hmm. and going to different environments and they're being in different, played in different ways. Of course. And also you're trying to, to develop a tone that is appealing to most people because we can always hone in for a certain play. I was just saying that Sam was asking me a question like, the best luthiers can listen to you. You may come and say, I want my guitar to do this. And that luthier knows how to, to build that, to get yeah. what you want. Yeah. That's the, that's the best thing, yeah. really. But, uh, but you know, it takes years of experience to do that. Like if you came to me and said, I wanted to do this and that and that and that, it's hard to do. Mm -hmm. But some people can do it beautifully. You and know, it's not just that though, I mean, of course there's a process involved, isn't there as well, there's a, there's a factory. There's a factory. To consider. Yeah, you know, it's, you know, uh, you know, Yairi or bench made guitars by people who have chosen guitar building as their profession, they, they go through an apprenticeship and our Alvarez guitars, you know, are production line guitars. I'm very clear about that and I think it's good and, and I'm as proud as the production line guitars as, as, as I am with the handmade guitars and mm. I think they're both think different things or different approaches, but you can still get great results. So anyway, we'll, maybe we'll come back to bracing. I was just going to point out this one is very heavily braced. There's a lot of wood on this top sure. because that's a baritone. It's a baritone. So baritone, 700 mil scale length. I was going to ask you this question about bracing and tone bars and, and you know, finger bracing and stuff on different mm -hmm. shapes, guitars. Mm -hmm. So what would, the, what would the bracing be like on a parlor, for example? So parlor, you could take it lighter mm -hmm. because there's less tension. There's a smaller area to deal with because there's, there's, you know, there's, mm -hmm. the top's not as big. It's just not as big. Sure. Um, often we, we would only use one tone bar. Right. So you could take, you could take a tone bar off. You could maybe cut the top a bit thinner. Mm -hmm. We could go into you know, the, another, another show about uh, wood thicknesses. But, but you're dealing with, you know, for example, the ukulele. Don't need any bracing really. Mm -hmm. There's hardly any tension on it. Yeah. You know, we have we have one sort of transverse brace and they've got a bridge plate. Yeah. But that's it. That's it. Yeah. So over here there's so much resonance. Those big, thick, heavy strings tuned down a fourth. And the and the massive scale length. So the yeah. longer the scale length, you know, more string tension you're gonna sure. have. So 
you got a, a super long scale and big, exactly what you said, big, thicker mm -hmm. strings, mm -hmm. all adding to more tension. Yeah. The X is pushed way back. Mm -hmm. So this, yes. not just this part, but this part here is super solid. So if you if we had this top by itself and you try to flex that, mm -hmm. it wouldn't go anywhere. Yeah. And also in a baritone, you want that kind of because rigidity. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the sound, really, you don't want those. Yeah. You know, you're not looking for like. Yeah, because I'm thinking about you know from a an EQ, you know, energy kind of point mm -hmm. of view, you're going to get so much low lower mids. Yeah. And potential problems, you know, wooliness and. But mainly it's tension, you know, and, and that's why we make them super strong. So. Sound box, so this is our sound box. We could get into to, to things like thicknesses of sides, more bracing, if this is a laminated body, but you would have uh, side braces mm -hmm. on all solid guitars. So all solid instruments are more temperamental, could be more volatile. So we actually put side braces to, to keep that strength. They're a little more susceptible In to- In a solid body guitar. In a solid body guitar, yeah, we would do that. Laminated, we don't. Because mm -hmm. it already has that strength from being three pieces of wood. Stuck together, yeah. Mm. And they're, they're just very stable in, in, in all conditions. But actually, again, I was just talking to Sam. So some, you know, when you've got all of this sound energy going on, you, you know, you've got your strings hitting the saddle, transferring the energy in the top, and the top's vibrating. Mm. And you've got this, all this energy, frequency and response going on inside the sound box. And, and what does it do in there? before it gets back out again. And again, I was reading you know, the Tim White book, and what he believes you got the kind of this soup can of mad energy, you know, this, this thing here. Mm. What was energy going on before mm. it's released out the sound hole? You know, I've read things, and I, I, I wouldn't claim I know this particularly well, but between the weight and how you shape the X to the thickness of the sides, you can actually change the tone of that sound box probably by a semi, half a semitone. Literally, you know. Wow. So we'll try and prove that as we move forward. We'll have to build a few samples. <laughs> All of that energy is going on and eventually it's getting out, out through the sound hole. And, and beyond that, it's our brain like recognizing that and, and you know, and, and yeah. processing that to hear what, what, we, what we hear. So often people will, will say it's like a speaker, sort of how a speaker works, but, but it's a bit different, I think. So you've got an end block. Again, for strength, everything ties in. Yeah. You can, especially if you've got a jack coming through there. Yeah, that, of course. That, 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 so that's very important. And, and that's about it. That's what's inside. Great stuff. Oh, one thing you mentioned, bridge plate. Mm -hmm. Bridge plate's kind of important because it's part of the, the bracing system. It's not a brace, but, it's, is but it, it is bracing. Is it a maple or? Correct. Mm -hmm. Some people use rosewood. There's a great forum called the Unofficial Martin Guitar Forum. Mm -hmm. Like people on there know everything about Martins, like every little detail. It's unbelievable. And they said something like Martin used a rosewood bridge plate from 68 to 88 or something like that. And they're the bad sounding ones. I have no idea if that's true. Because to me, rosewood's harder than maple. So maybe that the strength of that is just not allowing the top to move a bit more. I don't, I don't know, maybe somebody, you know, a Martin enthusiast can let us know, but Martin did use rosewood uh, bridge plates for a certain amount of time, then they stopped. We've always used maple. It's gotta be solid. I see people using laminated bridge plates. You shouldn't be doing that. You just shouldn't because the pins are getting drilled through. You've got, you've got the bridge sitting on top. Of course. And the pins are getting thing. And then you've got ball ends mm -hmm. sitting on the inside from the strings, pulling at that tension. Mm -hmm. Do not use low quality woods. And where you have laminated woods can be stronger in certain things, it's not in that. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's going to, because it's about hardness rather than, you know, sort of stability. Yeah, of course. So maple's great. It's a great transfer of energy. It's a great tone wood. I've never tried a rosewood bridge plate. Maybe we should try that as well. Maybe we should try and make a sample and see if there's a difference. But it should be, it should be a piece of hardwood, solid. So that's that. So mate, we've got three different types of fingerboards here, I've noticed. Yep. Um, Rosewood, laurel, mm -hmm. and ebony. Correct. Well done, mate. Do you want to, thanks very much, mate. Do you want to just run us through the differences and the benefits of each one? Yeah, well, they're all good. So, um, laurel, we went to laurel when CITES restricted rosewood. So, when it was that 2017, it made uh, rosewood harder to sort of move around and ship internationally and all that sort of stuff. And then they realized two years later, maybe that was kind of crushing a 
peanut with a sledgehammer. It was a bit of an overreaction. <clears throat> it wasn't in some ways because there was there was rosewood coming from Africa, which was very you know illegally traded and 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 all that sort of stuff. But actually, in in India, you know, East Indian rosewood is it's all plantation wood. It's very well managed. Yeah. It's replanted, and it's like there's endless amounts. And um, you were telling me, I think that laurel and rosewood are quite similar. They're quite similar. They're a similar. You know, they're a different species of tree. They're a similar hardness. Yeah. I think rosewood is very slightly harder. They look fairly similar, and we found this to be super stable. So people started using many things like oven coal, walnut. I thought they were too soft, so we went to laurel, <clears throat> and now you know, sort of transitioning back to rosewood because now society's changed their mind. Mm -hmm. This is very similar to sounding, feeling, density, all that sort of stuff to rosewood, and it's been great for the past few years for us. We've we really liked it. Rosewood is a bit darker. Yes. And it's actually lighter than that, but it's strong. Mm -hmm. So it's great. In guitar building, you love light, strong woods. That's, yes. That's what that's what we like. So and it's definitely more attractive, and it's you know it's certainly more traditional. Yes. Rosewood's great. It's hard. It's light. Tone-wise, you know how much you get in from the from from the fingerboard or the fretboard. You go back to our academic book, and they'll say sound and, and ref reflection and or sound and frequencies coming from ev everything. If I was go then going to say what's the difference between rosewood and ebony, you feel a difference. Yeah, in there's a too. huge weight difference, isn't there? Wow. Yeah. I mean, it's ebony, steel like. It's isn't like it? steel. Yeah. yeah. Now, ebony's just so dense. I think this is probably about 30% denser or harder. I have to look that up, but it's certainly heavy wood and incredibly resonant. Yeah. There's something about an ebony fingerboard, though, isn't there? Well, you know, there's feel. Like, feel is something. I mean, it feels different. Mm -hmm. You know, if I was attempted to describe it from a tonality thing, what makes sense to me is it's going to affect separation, clarity, and response. And sustain? Yeah, I think that's probably more because you usually tie it in with an ebony bridge. So so those working together, I think the, the sustain part may, more comes from the bridge. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to use an ebony fingerboard, you're going to use an ebony bridge. Yeah, right. So I would say that, you know, tone-wise, yeah, in, my, in my mind, I feel as though this will be more of a woodier sound mm -hmm. because it's, it's, it's a bit softer. That's more like clarity like more of a glassier kind of yeah but it's not glassy but it but it's describing it would be we're heading that way i'd rather mm -hmm. go into like you know separation clarity yeah feel yeah all that sort of stuff and it's and i mean when this gets shaved down what five mil or something five mil, or, yeah. yeah you know people use diff different woods i would say stick with tradition yeah rosewood or ebony yeah but laurel has been really great for uh for, for those years that we couldn't, couldn't so use where, uh, rosewood. So uh, guitars in the range, there's not many would have an ebony board, or do any have an ebony board? So in Yairi, yeah, all Masterworks, Honduras is all ebony. Yes. DC bridges, ebony, headstock fascia. I think, for me, if you use ebony, like tie it in through through bridge, fingerboard, headstock fascia. That's yeah. how I like to do it anyway. Yeah. Um, in our Alvarez guitars, it's all... Um, Rosewood, or obviously the last few years was Laurel. So, but <laughs> was that a leading question? <laughs> may have been. May have been. But we may we we are working on something. So Alvarez got moving to some ebony. We're certainly trying that. Yes. At the moment, and it, they sound they sound amazing. It makes all the difference, I believe. I think everything. To me. Make, I think everything we've discussed makes a difference. And certain elements of the guitar make a more profound in in, in the sound or mm -hmm. strength. Mm -hmm. And you know, and also what we haven't talked about really is all these bits. I mean, you know, it's a th thing I've said this before. What I love about acoustic guitar is it's 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 a simple thing, right? Like how many pieces of wood, and you, you put some steel strings on, but it's really complicated, and there's endless, infinite amounts of decisions yeah. you can make. Yeah, of course. And Everything has some sort of impact. Mm -hmm. So that's like, and that's why it's so interesting. That's why you have these forums of billions of messages. Yeah. Like people getting really passionate sort of um, opinions about what they believe in, which might be very different to the next person. Sure, and I think course. I think that's one of the beauties about acoustic guitars or acoustic instruments in general. 
And then you've got the fact that it's all natural materials, which are different anyway. So it's, yeah, you know, it's cool. like it's it's endless, really. And then there's a whole other stuff. You know, we haven't even touched upon yet. Aesthetics. You know, the the binding mm. and the yeah. uh, you know the beautiful kind of uh, detail around the sound holes and. So obviously, binding. Generally, you use ABS, which is a plastic binding, mm -hmm. or wood, and you have bevels, which which we have on many of our models. Then you have purfling, which is my favourite word in guitar making. Purfling, which is these little decorative pieces in between the top yes. and the binding. It's a nice word, isn't it? It's beautiful. Not recognised by the computer as an English word, purfling. Really? No. I always get that red line when I write purfling. Oh, that's they? interesting. Yeah. To teach the computer to, <laughs> to learn that. So that's the purfling. I always like that herringbone kind of purfling that's yeah, on the, yeah herringbone or the rope or really there's, there's all sorts yeah. of stuff shell you can have mm -hmm. shell purfling people mm -hmm. call it shell but it's purfling so it's decoration but also i mean you you should have something between it's better to have something when you're making these it's it, it allows you some tolerance yeah so purfling is important rosette um we keep ours fairly simple and then then we can get it a finish which we have done before Finish is a whole other program, but it's like we use polyurethane. Sometimes on certain woods or certain models, we may use a middle coat of polyester, but not usually. Polyester is great, stable for a middle coat, but polyurethane looks much nicer. Mm -hmm. So, but PU is softer, and nitrocellulose is even softer than that. So you might get some sinkage, and nitrocellulose is certainly. Got to be very skilled to work with that. So a lot of the older guitars would have been cellulose, right? Correct. Because that's when you start seeing all those. Yeah, you know. PU will sink as well. Yeah. You, you feel the grain on the top. Yeah. But PU will take longer to sink than nit nitrocellulose. Mm -hmm. But nitrocellulose is super thin. You know, you're looking certainly finish effect sound. You you know you're plasticizing the guitar almost. Yeah, of course. So we often on our sides and back we we, we do like a semi gloss finish, gloss finish on the top. But it does protect the, the wood and it protects the instrument and it, ma and it makes it look great. So finishes, we could talk about, uh, we, we should make an episode about finish. It, it could go on forever. And and that's about it. You know, we, we have our inlays, abalone, mother of pearl, mm -hmm. wood inlays, et cetera, et cetera. We don't have fret markers? We don't. Of which some people have taken umbrage. <laughs> <laughs> some people have like, you know, so one person came to me once and said, <clears throat> you're not selling enough guitars because you haven't got dots in the neck. Okay, well, we have dots in the side. And to me, you play guitar this way. Mm -hmm. You can see where your hands are and the position markers on the side. You don't kind of lean forward and see that. I know it. I, I get it. Is it an aesthetic thing It's an you, aesthetic then? thing yeah. for me. Like, you know, Mr. Yairi, and it might be the Japanese thing, you know, like everything simple, mm -hmm. simple lines, simple, elegant beauty. And I like that. And I think the more stuff you start putting on guitars, for me, the, the, the less attractive. I'd rather invest in great quality woods and dress things up. Yeah. We do have some Abalon perfilling and some models, and we do have some prettier guitars and more exotic woods. Mm -hmm. And that's you know great that people like that, but we still keep it fairly ordered. That would be my preference to have yeah. the symbol. Aesthetic. I, I like traditional traditional design, or just like I mean, I can appreciate very much <clears throat> the um, the bling. It yeah. looks beautiful, mm -hmm. um, but I do I do prefer something yeah simpler, more elegant. Yeah, for me, same here. It's all personal preference, same as the shape and the tone. Mm. And then other things. Obviously, we've got our bridge. We haven't got a DC bridge here, but this is our bi level bridge. That will be a laurel. That is laurel. Mm -hmm. Look at you. I know. Oh, God, he's becoming an expert. So, uh, but, you know, I mean, it's like steel itself. You know? Yeah, it's there's like... some serious strength in there, isn't there? Were they rosewood? They were. And you went to laurel? Just because of the slightest thing. But, okay. um, yeah, here he is, uh, ebony. Ebony. So, for us, we have the bi-level, so the bridge pins are lower, and we get a bit better brake angle on the saddle to... We Mr. Yairi's idea in the 80s, so mm -hmm. he felt we would get more tension in the sound box that way. So this is a one-piece version of his design, the direct couple bridge, because mm -hmm. he put his pins in the top. We can't do that in mass production. It's got to be very skilled, and it's, there's more risk in that. So, uh, and then you have bridge pins. You know, we, we've been asked about bridge pins before. What 
material the bridge pins are made from is definitely impactful. And we had a conversation a little while ago when it was you and I and Tim sitting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, all about bridge pins. We haven't talked about that yet. Would they normally be in a Yairi that would be ebony? Yeah. And are they laurel in Alvarez or are they ebony also? Ebony in Masterworks. Yeah. PPS in Artists. Yeah. Ah, okay. Do, do you know what that means? That means, uh, no, plastic. <laughs> it's called uh, polyphenol sulfate. I've seen brass pins. I think we had a question about different bridge pins, so we can mm -hmm. come back. But but definitely, like things like materials of nuts, saddles, and bridge pins absolutely have some impact. I saw Martin release some liquid metal bridge pins, right? Which I think are about two hundred and fifty bucks or something. I guess it's again, it's like hardness, softness. You know, the string is go, is 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 connecting with metal rather well, than, rather than, that, yeah. than wood, and it's it's about what you like. So I mm -hmm. think I think again, I haven't tried those, but I'm thinking wood, woodier sound, more middly, bit warmer. Mm. But if you wanted something brighter, you'd probably go to brass or or, or, yeah. or liquid metal. Yeah. But um, I've got some actually. Should we do a and, bridge uh, pin episode? I think we should. Yeah, I think we have good. some bridge pins here somewhere. You know, that'd be good. Yeah. So so certainly things like like um, nut saddle. Bridge pins, yes, they can affect sound. Mm -hmm. and, and again, it's back to that personal preference of mm, you know, getting into that sort of metallic. For me, once you bring in that metallic element of, it, of, it, of sound, you're moving away from, from, from what it really is. You know, I think traditional materials, for me anyway, and like, like PPS is that polyphenol sulfate. It's, it's supposed to replicate sort of like a bone type thing. And mm -hmm. I guess finally strings. We strings. always have twelves on guitars, right? Always twelves. You yeah, told yeah. me this because I like an eleven, and I stopped using elevens. <sighs> you can't use an eleven <laughs> on the. For me, the minimum you got to use on an acoustic guitar is twelve. Yeah. And thirteens on some guitars with some playing styles feel great. Yeah. Thicker the string, that raises tension sure. again. Certainly, you would argue that it takes a bit more to, to fret and, not, and get a clean note. You know, mm -hmm. a bit more pressure. But if the action on the guitar is right and all the geometry is right, 13s is good. I like 13s. Mm. But minimum 12s. Yes, the material of strings is super, super important. And strings between like an 8020 to a fossil bronze, coated, uncoated, Monel, which is like this, you know, the, uh, uh, an older material. So you just got to find, that's personal preference. Yeah. Feel, all that sort of stuff. But we're using the Dario XS. XS. Yeah, which are fossil bronze, yeah. coated. Really nice, I think. I think we've been through most things. Mm -hmm. I think and, so. Um, I think what it's done is it's kind of exposed what we could get maybe, you know, into the weeds a bit. I think we could get. Into, I think bracing would be something we could maybe have a bit of a deeper dive on. That'd be Finish. that'd be quite interesting. Finish as well. Yeah, without a doubt. Maybe get into sanding. Sanding okay, just sanding yeah. episodes. That was exciting. <laughs> grits. <laughs> All our different grits for different papers and yeah, but. Uh, but anyway, I think uh, as a general anatomy, quick run through of uh, an acoustic guitar. Brilliant. Nice one, yeah. mate. Thanks very much. And if you've got any thoughts, uh, you want to leave some comments uh, down below. We'd love to hear from you. And yeah, we'll see you next time. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks very guys. much. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, click the like button and consider subscribing to our channel. If you want to watch more videos like this one, click the video on the screen now.